M0FXB, welcome to my videos on the ICOM IC705. M0FXB, let's look at the function menu. So, first thing you do is push function. What we're going to do, we're going to do one at a time. We're going to actually read what the manual says for a change. So, preamp, you can turn it on one and two. One and two. If you hold it, it attenuates. Okay. The manual says the preamp amplifies received signals in the noise receiver front end to improve the signal to noise ratio and sensitivity. A preamp is used when, the, when receiving weak signals. Each band memorizes the preamplifier settings. Now the attenuator part. The attenuator prevents a desired signal from becoming distorted when a very strong signal is near the frequency or when a very strong signal electric field such as from a broadcasting station is near your location again it's memorized this won't work on 144 and 430 megahertz now i'll just back out and i'll just show you see that the preamp's not on at the moment then we'll go menu sorry function i mean sorry the preamp was on we'll just turn it off and look at the difference it makes to the signal. So it does bring in everything. Sometimes the attenuator is better. Okay, back to the function menu. And now we're going to look at AGC. So the selections you have are mid, slow, and fast. Mid, slow, and fast. So let's put it on fast. We'll back out. So this is what you can see when it's on fast. So what is AGC? It's automatic gain control. AGC is a system that controls the increase in the amplitude of an electrical signal from the original input to the amplified output automatically. So you can see it is on the fast setting. Let's go function and let's go to slow. So I think it has an effect on the actual signal meter, if you ask me. And the other thing you can do is when you're in it, you can hold your finger on it and you can adjust these three things here, fast, mid and slow. Here's the chart. Pause on this if, it, if it's helpful. And what the manual says is you can set the preset AGC time constant to the desired value. OK, let's back out of that. I noticed there was a default button there. And now we'll go on to the notch. So we'll tap notch on AN minimum, I think that says MN mid, off. AN, MN mid, and off. Let's hold it. And you have these adjustments that you can make here. And look, you can adjust the width here, right and left. A notch filter, usually a simple LC circuit, is used to remove a specific interfering frequency. This is the technique used with radio receivers that are so close to a transmitter that it swamps all other signals. When manual notch is selected, adjust the filtered frequency. Let's exit out of that, go back to notch. So I'm guessing that, well I know that MN means it's manually adjusted. When it's off, it's off. And then when it's AN, I would guess that's automatic notch. And when you hold the button down, you obviously adjust it up here, but you can also adjust it here. Look, narrow, wide. There you go. There's more adjustments there. And when you're turning the knob slowly to manually attenuate the frequency. And then to close the notch, just exit like so. Right, okay, now let's push function again and we'll go to noise blanker. So this, this I find is okay, on and off, and then you can hold it. Noise blanker and automatic noise limit are used to reduce the amount of unwanted static or interference you can get from many sources. Specifically, these functions are mostly used for unwanted ignition noise, power lines, inverters, ETC. And the manual says, adjusting the noise blank level and time to deal with various types of noise, you can adjust the attenuation level and blanking depth and width in the noise blanker menu, which you've got here, width, depth, and level. So play with that to get the, you know, to try and remove these unwanted sounds. 
and then back out like this we'll hit the function and we're going to move on to the noise reduction which is on or off now remember that all of these can be a shortcut can be added if you hold your finger on one of them obviously you get the adjustment here for noise reduction yeah we're on noise reduction now by the way if you hold your finger here you can then use the multi knob to adjust the same function so you can look at the screen and see what's going on um, but the other thing is if you tap there you could it will bring you back to whatever you're on whether you're on memory channel or vfo so i find the noise reduction very effective i use it all all of the time let's hold our finger you've got that so yeah i highly recommend using that so menu next one in function menu is split so that's the self-explanatory we shall turn it on though split and it's on now and if we back out when we key the mic it will split and it will key on a different frequency that you've selected on the B band. So that's split operation. Then we'll go menu. Sorry, I keep pushing the wrong button. Vox. Well, we know what Vox is. If you turn Vox on and I speak, one, two, it will TX. And there are settings for this. Uh, here, you've got gain, anti-Vox, delay and voice delay off as well. I don't think you can set a shortcut for that, although we will try, but I don't think so. Um, function, hold our finger on Vox, no. And you've got these different adjustments you can make on Vox. There you go, so I've never used Vox, but to turn Vox on, just get that gain down. There's a Vox button here, on, off, on, off, and it appears here with a little logo. Same goes for the comp, when the comp is on, there's a little logo here. Same goes for noise blanker, noise reduction, and uh, manual notch is listed there as well. So everything is turned on at the moment. Anyway, so, function. Let's do TBW, which is set on wide. What TBW stands for is the transmit filter widths. So it, tr it changes the value of the transfer sorry transmit width and i'm going to show you what it shows on the manual and icom say to change the filter width in ssb mode so it's ssb mode so these are the amounts that it changes it by if you pause have a good look and these are the different menu selections as well menu set tone control tx tby tb mid tb narrow blah 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 so have a good look and um, if you want to uh change things you can look at this setting so like i said tap it narrow wide mid hold it down actually it doesn't show anything so it looks like you do have to go into the function menu let's have a quick look so as they go menu set and we're looking for Tone control, and then you've got RX TX. Let's go to TX SSB, and there you go TB wide, TB mid, TB narrow. So you've got changes that you can make there, the same as the chart that I just showed you. So, quite advanced settings here, aren't they? We've got a station here. Let's have a quick listen. Now oh, he's gone now, isn't that typical? So, we're on. We've turned on every filter, haven't we? <laughs> uh, let's turn some of them off. Off, off, off. Uh, uh, that's it. Manual notch, off, off. Let's turn everything, let's split off. Probably got the RF gain up. There'll be someone there. Got some interference there, local local QRM from the kids. Anyway, what's the last one? Function, and we're going to go to Moni, on and off. Hold it down. We've got all these settings. Let's have a look. Interesting, I can't find what the Moni is doing. Let's just go back to comp, because I think we missed that one out. So we've got comp on off. We've got all these settings here, and we can add shortcuts as well. And we've got the monitor thing here might gain RF power now it says using speech compressor function touch the multimeter again to display the comp meter 
um, as you can see. Turns on the speech compressor function, opens the multi-function menu. While speaking into the microphone at your normal level, rotate the multi to adjust the speech compressor level, I get. Uh, I know that that can make, you, make people hear you a bit better in weak signals. If the comp meter peaks exceeds the comp zone, your transmitted voice may be dist distorted. So you need to just set this on comp. See, it says comp there. And just make sure you don't peak too high and then close it down. I can't see at the moment the monitor thing. Now, obviously, we've got a monitor thing here on. And if we go out, if we go back to function, turn it off. And then if we go uh, function, hold it down, it's on. Or oh, we can turn it on and off there. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not really, I can't find in the manual what it does. Someone let me know if you can find it. Um, I'll keep looking though, uh, but it seems important. And my guess is, I'm not a big HF person, but my guess is these three settings here um, are important for, you know, for good SSB transmission and some of it possibly in CW. Um, so we'll go to menu two and then it's just your power. Obviously you need a DC supply to go to 10 watts and the duplex which is off at the moment. When you're in FM mode then you can set a, a split and you can, do, you can do it like a six meter, six meter repeater and it works great. So I think that's about it for this section on the 705 videos. Like I said, it's a great radio. One of the best out there, I would say. Easily my favourite radio. I know they've brought out the new Zygu, which I really like. Having great fun with it. But this, this is a far better radio. But you've got to think about the price. This is £1,200. The Zygu is 600 so it's half the price. Uh, I wouldn't say you get half the fun functions. Actually, I would say that the 705, you probably get five times the functions or more. So you are, you pay for what you get. I know it's a small box, a small little package here that you've got here. Um, but what they've packed into it is amazing. And um, if you haven't already got a 7300, then get yourself a, an amplifier. Not a great image, but the one I recommend is the XPA125B. They're about... They're nearly £500, but they work on most QRP radios, and they have a built-in tuner. And the only reason I haven't got one is because I've got an Icon 7300, so I use that for uh, 100 watts. And it, when I go portable, I don't want to have loads of power. I want to do it QRP. And because the antenna is away from all the interference, and you can earth it well, string it up in a great location, you're going to get plenty of contacts on 10 watts. So thanks for watching this section of my video on the ICOM 705. Uh, catch you on air. I uh, like a good chat on air. Please like and subscribe to my channel. 73, all the best.